Winning the lottery may seem like the best thing that could ever happen to you, but that's not always a happy ending. For some, it's perhaps the worst thing that's ever happened to them, and they've been left with even less than before they started. So join us as we count 10 lottery winners who lost it all. Number 10 Callie Rogers In 2003, Callie Rogers was 16 and living with her foster parents in the UK, working as a shop clerk, earning around £3.60 an hour. She bought a lottery ticket and what happened next changed her life forever. She won £1.9 million and despite saying in the beginning that she would not turn to a lavish life, ended up doing so anyway by buying four large homes, several new cars and had two breast surgeries. She purchased expensive gifts for all of her boyfriends and even bought a car for one of them and paid him to chauffeur her around since she was too young to drive herself at the age of 16. It was another drug, however, that would cause Rogers to lose her fortune, cocaine. She estimates that she spent around £250,000 on the drug. After all this, she was not left with much money. She sold her homes and fancy cars and rented a modest townhouse, saving the last remaining £40,000 of her once massive fortune and got a job as a maid. However, in April 2012, low on funds, pregnant with twins and with a new loving boyfriend at her side, Rogers said, For the first time, I feel like I have everything I need. It really goes to show that money isn't always everything. Number 9 Jack Whittaker For once, we have a man who was already a successful businessman at the time of winning the lottery. Jack Whittaker spent decades building a water and sewer pipeline company in West Virginia, but entered a new level of wealth when he won $315 million playing Powerball in 2002, the single largest jackpot at the time. Winning the lottery gave Jack more than just money though. He also became famous. He was constantly being asked for money and developed a gambling and drinking habit. His wife of 42 years ended up leaving him and some thieves stole a briefcase from his strip club containing over half a million dollars. And in another incident, stole $100,000 that Whitaker had left in plain sight on the passenger seat of his car. His beloved Brandy had only been 15 when Whitaker won the lottery. By 17, she was dead, her body found wrapped in tarp behind a junked van. An autopsy revealed recent cocaine use. Not long after, Whitaker's daughter and Brandy's mother, who suffered from recurring lymphoma, was also found dead. Number 8 Lisa Arcand in April 2004, Lisa Arcan was a single mother in the US when she bought a lottery ticket that turned her into a millionaire. After that, she instantly started spending mass amounts of money on mostly unnecessary things. First, she hosted a party for friends and family, who ordered several $200 bottles of wine. She enrolled her son in a private school with a $10,000 annual tuition. She went on multiple vacations and purchased a house filled with furniture. She then set her eyes on opening her own business and bought a seafood restaurant. Less than six months down the line, financial issues forced her to close the place down. While the lottery mandated annual payments of $35,000 rather than a lump sum, a financial services company aggressively went after her, offering her an upfront payment of $200,000 in exchange for $15,000 a year of her winnings. While this gave her more upfront cash, it put her in a higher tax bracket, further reducing her money. Lisa was left with a failed business and an empty bank account, eagerly awaiting her next annual payment. Number 7 Michael Carroll Back in 2002, Michael Carroll won the UK's national lottery, winning a very healthy sum of £9.7 million. A decade later, he was living on public benefits after having wasted all of his riches. Carroll became the definition of being rich and reckless. He bought and destroyed a mansion, he threw lavish parties for his friends and on a daily basis would spend over £3,000 on smoking crack cocaine. He bought expensive cars and destroyed them on his DIY racetrack he created on the grounds of his mansion and would let the wreckages stay and rust in the rain. Unsurprisingly, he spent his fair share on prostitutes and flashy jewellery. Eventually, reality caught up with Carol when he was forced to sell his mansion at a loss, and he was even caught shoplifting at a grocery market. Number 6 Janet Lee 
In 1993, Janet Lee won $18 million on the lottery. The 52-year-old South Korean began giving much of her winnings away to charity, although she did move into a million-dollar house. With 620,000 annual winnings, Lee's charitable efforts included sizable donations to Washington University School of Law and also donated hundreds of thousands to presidential political campaigns, which earned her tableside seating with Bill Clinton and Al Gore. Unfortunately, she was hiding a secret. That million dollar house she moved into, she didn't buy. Instead, she purchased it on a mortgage. In addition to this mortgage, she leased luxury cars and reportedly borrowed millions more from banks and credit cards. Even when she tried to make financially smart moves such as paying off a loan ahead of schedule, she ended up deeper in debt by owing $750,000 in early payoff penalties. By 2001, Lee was forced to sell the rights to future lottery payments and filed for bankruptcy being $2.5 million in debt. Number 5. Amanda Clayton Amanda Clayton was a 20-year-old jobless single mother living on public assistance when she cashed in a $1 million lottery ticket in late 2011. Naturally, she stopped collecting her government check, right? Wrong. Turns out she carried on collecting her $200 monthly checks. She thought as long as they kept coming in, she was entitled to keep them. In March the next year, a viewer tipped off a local TV station who then tracked down Clayton and found her paying for snacks with a public assistance card and then packing a moving truck for transitioning to her newly purchased home. When confronted, Clayton defended her right to be on the checks, claiming she was still unemployed and, I have bills to pay, I have two houses, a television Devised explanation that resulted in public outrage. According to Michigan law, welfare recipients must report any changes to their income within 10 days. The state attorney general charged Clayton with welfare fraud, to which she pleaded no contest. She was put on probation and ordered to pay back the money she was not entitled to. A year after winning, Clayton died at her home of a suspected drug overdose. Number 4. Bud Post Let's just say, Bud Post didn't have the easiest start in life. His mother died when he was eight, and his father had him sent off to an orphanage. As an adult, he became a carnival worker, and from there had a series of random jobs that didn't equate to much, and he couldn't afford a home or a car. In 1998, with less than $3 in his checking account, Post pawned a ring for $40 and spent the money on Pennsylvania lottery tickets. The next thing you know, he walked away with a whopping $16.2 million. So, did life get easier for Bud Post after this? Nope. Once word of his good fortune spread, his landlady and occasionally girlfriend demanded and received one third of his winnings, claiming he'd promised to split the winnings after she bought the tickets for him. His brother decided to have Bud killed and hired a hitman to take him out. It wasn't all down to external sources though. Bud made his fair share of cock-ups, like buying a plane he wasn't able to fly. He spent his last $2.6 million on two homes, several motorcycles, three cars, a truck and a sailboat. He also racked up seven marriages during this time. Nearly penniless, the lottery winner eventually lived on a $450 disability payment until he died at age 66 eight years after winning big. Number three. Alex Toth In 1990, Alex Toth lived with his girlfriend and six children from previous relationships. They had less than $25 to live on for the next seven days, after already having spent weeks living on canned beans, rice and soup. This all changed when Toth bought a lottery ticket and won $13 million. As usual, they claimed the money wouldn't change their way of life, yet they spent the first three months living on a $1,000 a night hotel room in Las Vegas. They gambled, dined and shopped and bought tickets to expensive live shows. Once they got bored, they returned to Florida and purchased a double wide on 10 acres of land. Before long, money troubles began. The Toths filed for bankruptcy twice and were convicted of filing three years of fraudulent tax returns. The IRS said the Toffs had falsely reported gambling losses to offset their lottery winnings and now owed millions back in taxes. In addition, Toff was arrested multiple times for growing marijuana and writing bad checks. After losing all of the winnings, they moved in with their son and daughter-in-law. Just a short time later, Alex Toff died penniless. Number 2. Lou Eisenberg Another story where the man ends up broke. 
but for once a happy ending. Lou Eisenberg is a retiree in Florida living a simple life. He spends an occasional day at the dog track making penny bets and then returns to the mobile home he shares with his longtime girlfriend. But life was not always so cash strapped for Lou. On Friday the 13th in 1981, Eisenberg won $5 million in the New York lottery, the largest payout at the time, which he accepted in 219,000 annual installments for the next 20 years. The win and fame that came with it led to talk show appearances, television commercials and lavish trips to foreign lands. He treated friends and family to expensive cuisine, shared the winnings with two of his three wives and helped whomever he could. In 2001, when he received his final lottery check, he knew one thing for sure. He was broke again and would probably stay that way for the rest of his life, content to live on earnings from his social security and pension checks. Still, Eisenberg doesn't regret spending it all. I wouldn't have done it any other way, he claimed. Number 1. Willie Hurt Willie Hurt was a simple family man living in Michigan, US when he won the 1989 lottery jackpot. He didn't think it would change his life, but oh was he wrong. By the time he'd received just two of the 156,000 annual installments of his lottery win, Hurt was in the process of a divorce and had lost custody of his children. He'd also spent most of the money on crack cocaine. Then things got even worse. After a 48-hour drug and alcohol binge, Hurt allegedly argued with his girlfriend when they couldn't find more crack. When she was later found shot in the head, Hurt was charged with first-degree murder and, if convicted, would spend life in prison. Although there's no word on whether Hurt was convicted, even if he was, he could continue to receive future lottery payments. 